everybody, this is Jean and Jen here. Hello. From True Love Quotes for You. Um, this is Jean's Block Party 2018, and I have with me Jen and her almost finished quilt. We've gotten to the point where we have to quilt this quilt. Now, I have seen what Jen has done, but I wanted to do this unveiling. <laughs> I'm going to be in trouble. <laughs> that was not going to be in trouble. But I just wanted to show you. I had to back the camera up. That's the reason. Um, oh, my God. stupid crocs on. Um, Jen got this beautiful backing fabric. We're ready to quilt our quilt. Jen got this beautiful B backing fabric. I had encouraged Jen <clears throat> to, to get um, a I nicer was, quality fabric. Yeah, I was going with the navy fabric I had um, that had white in it, but it read navy. Yeah. And um, Jean was saying, I might want one with more of a white background because I'm quilting with white thread. Right. right? And, and also, and also, I've not really quilted. Right. You want a busy, perhaps a busier pattern. So Jen loved it, her B fabric. So she splurged. Don't tell her husband. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to watch this. Um, she splurged and got her lovely um, B fabric, which is soft and buttery and Oh, it's, nice oh it's so nice quality. Yeah, it really, it. really is well worth it. Well worth it for the backing for Jen's quilt. So the last video we saw that Jen was supposed to watch, I did feel like you did watch it. You didn't watch it. <laughs> I because, think I was distracted. Me. Because um, remember when we were pin basting, I was pin basting over on my table and I was saying we had gotten tons of fabric, which was fine. But I was saying to Jen or to you viewers, how I do it is I put my, um, sometimes when I'm doing such a large quilt, I start at one side um, and then base, pin base from that side over. And that way you have, you don't waste, you don't waste fabric, but you, you can get a larger cut of fabric off of the one side yeah. instead of having it two down the, each side. So I missed that. So, so Jen must have missed that because because now I have a king size quilt. This is supposed to be a throw quilt, and look how, look how <laughs> Jen has centered. Beginner woes. <laughs> Jen has centered her her quilt. This is why you should watch her videos and do what she says. <laughs> I can't. I don't understand how you didn't watch that that video and get I, it. I know. You watched me pin basting. Yes, I watched you pin basting. Well, then you sh you should have seen me. Remember, I I put this I put the the side of the fabric. I put this all along the side of my table. Yeah. And you did it on your table. I did it on my table, okay. and that worked amazing. Okay. Yeah. Because you were doing it on your floor. I had done so it. So then I like <laughs> here's the side of the table. This and is here's why. The Way need, down. This there. is why we need to watch the videos right before we do something. Yeah. Oh, and did you? Oh, I watched it, but like a week before. I oh, this, uh, this isn't it. directional. Yeah, it is actually. This whole thing's upside down. Oh, uh oh. I directioned it. You with, directioned it with a with a heart. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. you, so this would have been your top. Yes. And and you have. I said to allow. If you remember, I said to allow about five inches. Well, I thought this I is Jen's five inches. <laughs> she said, "Why did you allow so much?" I said, "You said five inches." She's like, "That's she not five stinks inches." She with measuring. <laughs> well, I'm gonna have an entire year's course on measuring just for Jen. <laughs> this is Jen's five inches. Perhaps it's it's yours. Perhaps too. they should have measured. <laughs> This was about five, but oh, I get out of town! No, I was on a table. It was hard to tell. But if you had watched the video, <laughs> you would have seen the side. This piece here would have come up to here. Yeah. And this top piece here would have come up to here. The only reason I say that this is fine. This is fine. I'm, I'm not just, being mean to Jen. No, I'm just, I'm just like, she has a point. I'm going to waste fabric. You're going to cut I, off all of that, yeah. and then you're going to cut off all of this, and you're going to cut off all of that and down there. Yeah. Whereas you you would have had two cuts, right? Which would have been larger here yes. and larger down there, and more. Usable cuts. That's all. Yeah. But yeah. that's all. Do you understand that? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I just totally. Yes. Okay. You understand it now. Yeah. Well, you didn't understand <laughs> did. it then. Okay. You understand it now. I understand so she it now. understands it now. Anyway, what we're going to be doing? Jen came this morning. The kids are swimming in the pool. What we're going to do? I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to have. I'm going to show you. Um. I'm going to show Jen 
how to actually set up the painter's tape and actually what she bought her machine <clears throat> actually how we're going to start quilting this first of all we are going to trim it yes we're going to trim it um as you oh if you watch my video i trimmed on camera my 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 excess okay so i have a little tiny mini quilt <laughs> She has a king size quilt. Uh, honestly, though, I did think we were quilting with five inches. I didn't realize we were pinning with five inches, trimming with one inch. No, I'm not trimming. It's about two and a half inches. I'm trimming. Oh, two and a half. Yeah, oh, two okay. and a half, three inches. Okay. Yeah. I just think I'm bad with ma measurements. Yeah, you are. Which we already know. Yeah. <laughs> this is really bad. Look at all. There's like a foot down there. Remember I tied the yard, and I go, I have like two feet at the bottom. And I, I'm like, well, that's okay because I knew we'd gotten six yards of fat. You want yeah. six yards? Six yards. And yeah. you you used the whole six yards. I did. Ah, yeah. You didn't have to because remember we only used five and a quarter yards right. from the calculation. So right there is almost a yard right. that you didn't have to put on your table. But that's okay. This is fun. This okay. is a learning curve, Jen's first quilt pin basting she's learned i did good pin basting she did a very very good job pin i listened basting. i did lots of pins. you did lots I did my of, whole thing you, okay and did you have to go buy more pins no i had a big bag oh you had a big bag. okay so she's pin basted beautifully what we're going to do now i'm going to take the jen in the sewing room we're just going to trim this off and again i was saying her beautiful bee fabric, it won't go to waste because she can make baby quilts. You yeah, can back, I'll use it. Yeah, she'll use the fabric. But my point in make, in doing the way I did it, show it was showing it, is to have two larger pieces instead of the piece there and the piece there. Yeah. Um, to have to have a couple bit, bit more usable pieces. But yes. that's this is absolutely fine. Um, she did her her seam beautifully, matched up beautifully. You can't see it. Um, Fantastic. Look at that. I can't even see it. That's good. I see it, but that's because I did it. It's in the middle. Oh, now I see yeah. it. Yeah. But that's beautiful. She she matched up directional fabric. Again, first time, first time. Um, she did a really good job. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go in and we're going to trim it. I'm going to show Jen. I'm not going to do it on camera. I'll show her. I'll, I'll, I'll film some later of her actual quilting and her quilting stitches. Um, but this is... This is the next now step. Now the big step. Yeah, to actually quilt it. We got our painter's tape at the ready, and um, I'll show you folks then Jen's progress. Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. We're going to quilt this thing. So I'm in my sewing room with Jen, and we have just trimmed off many yards of many, <laughs> many, many, many yards of which but I'm it's okay. Yeah, it. she's going to do something with it. So now this is Jen's quilt, all trimmed up beautifully. Within two, two or three inches of the basted quilt top. As you can see here, we have started to put some painter's tape. And I want Jen to explain what I just showed her what to do. So we started at the corner. And Jean had me put the tainer, painter's tape on a diagonal. First, just across the cornerstone and then just across each block. So I used one piece of tape, but at, when I was laying it, I was just laying it from point to point, and that helped me achieve a straight line. So I didn't need to measure or ruler or anything. And I, she told me to be real careful of like this white block here to make sure that looks straight from corner to corner. And if you notice, that's not sh the painter's tape. I'm looking through the viewfinder and I'm looking at it. That painter's tape is slightly crooked. However, when you actually see, if you can see that it's slightly bowed there because the important part is your eye going on this particular white block. You want it going from point to point. Had we made that painter's tape perfectly straight because of Jen's piecing, which is slightly, which are, well, they'll, they'll all be off slightly, the, her diagonal line would have been a bit skewed in the white block here. So we've sort of jiggery pokered it so it's, it's the, the tape, the eye will follow the white diagonal in this block, even though it's slightly off. You will not notice it because the, 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 the stitching will be straight in the block. Then we sort of 
semi-correct ourselves going back to the cornerstones and right again there's another block her B fabric which will be from diagonal to diagonal and it's going right through if you can see this point Jen will be stitching at this point here and then there's the the um, the grid the cornerstones and then again at our big um, butterfly block sampler block there you see the blue and the white Jen will be stitching sort of almost in the ditch there and then up to the cornerstone and then the masking tape is right off again this masking tape what I found um, it, you just sort of you just sort of lay the tape down you don't have to stretch it really hard you can just lay it down it doesn't leave any sticky residue and this way Jen will be able to stitch putting her starting here I'm sort of doing a, 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 this upside down starting at this end working towards that end on this side of the tape her presser foot will probably sort of be resting on the tape and the needle her stitching her quilting stitches will rest on right alongside the tape as a guide now I've told Jen don't forget about concentrating on this whole strip here that's not that's you get too stressed out what Jen's going to concentrate on is going from this corner having the quilt in her lap and, and supported on the table she's going to go from this corner through her heart to that corner and stop with the needle down that way we're, we're just quilting in 12 12 inch or the diagonal of the 12 inch increments mm -hmm. now does that yes that yeah makes sense. that makes sense mm -hmm. now um, oh, Jen just said this is going to take a long time well you know piecing a quilt is mm, not the easy part but it is is an easier part perhaps but this quilting method Jen was just saying oh no wonder you free motion quilts free motion quilting um, travels you're, you're, you can travel a long way across the top of a quilt this what we will do and I'm, I'm gonna have Jen stitch this out so we can show you we're gonna reposition our tape it will take some monotonous time mm -hmm. okay now oh you told me the other day about you free motion quilting I tried it yeah you told um, my us. yellow and gray quilt it was I can see how it's very freeing to do that. Yeah. It turned out terrible because I never did it before. Right, right, but right, right. I was okay with that. So I you expected you it. dropped your feed dog. I dropped my feed dog. Um, I should have lowered my stitch, which I didn't do. Right, because you should lower your stitch to zero. To zero. Now again, on this on this quilting application, you're going to um, you want to where's your stitch quilt? Which where's your stitch? About two. Okay, do it to two and a half. Oh, 2.5 bigger okay. because quilting stitches should be slightly bigger oh, okay. well when you think about like it's not the same look but you think about hand quilting right it's much bigger. it's much bigger yeah. so and it, it also um, when it's a smaller stitch it's scrunch it will scrunch up your quilt more okay. and so you just want a little bit we're just wanting to lay down the stitches okay we're not wanting to like stitch we're not piecing anything right. and that the, the, at about two and a half um, some people even go three I don't do that big that's almost well five and, or six is a basting stitch but you want it slightly bigger okay. so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get to, gonna turn the camera off gonna set Jen's machine up look her little her little it's sweet little baby, baby machine. <laughs> um, we're gonna set that up, and I actually, oh, I actually have um, a uh, what did I, a, a table? Okay. Because um, as you know, I'm here. I'm going to quilt my quilt on my juki, and I have. Let me get, turn this one off. I have this extension table, and I think it's very, very important to have a surface. I keep saying that when you go to quilt a quilt, it's very important to have a surface. Now, Jen's. This is my extension. Table. Yeah, that's her extension table. So my, I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if my my extension table, which is for my Husqvarna, will fit that. Um, it's over, it's over there, Jen. Excuse my messy, messy sewing room. 
It's, um... Is it black? No, it's not the black one. It's, um... It's in here. We'll watch my... Oh, yeah. It's in... It's down there, maybe? Oh! Oh! Sorry! <laughs> oh. <laughs> sorry. Never. Sorry. Oh, there's, oh, there's, do the show, oh. there's Dominic and me and my Sorry, mic, so, Tom. yeah. Oh, anyway, anyway I'll, 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 I'll find okay. the extension table. It's all the way over it's there. It's all the way over there. I'll get it. Um, because, because Jen's machine doesn't have the extension table. It's much easier to sew a quilt with an extension table. So we're going to sort that out and we're just, we're going to set Jen's machine up. Um, and we're going to try to, I'm going to show her, um, how to actually start quilting her quilt. Right? Do it. Okay. Jen is behind the camera. I'm going to be very steady. And, <laughs> and um, I've, I've just showing, uh, we've just taped out Jen's quilt, but we've done mine because I want to show Jen how I've, I'm going to be doing the, um, my quilting also. So I've marked my quilt out. And what I've said is to start, I've put my, my stitch length at about two and a half on my Juki. And what I've said is start off the end of the quilt. Just start off the end of the quilt. You don't have to back stitch or anything. And then I'm running my presser foot. My needle is just right on the side of my, um, of the side of the painter's tape. And I said to Jen, forget about this whole quilt, to the, the whole line of diagonal. You're just quilting. What do I always say? You're quilting right in front of you. You're just quilting here. The same way for free motion, for regular quilting. So now I'm just concentrating on my line, to the right of my line, and then because we've we've um we've laid the painter's tape down real nice, I keep adjusting it. So usually I would have my ironing board here to hold up the weight, but this isn't too heavy a quilt. I'm just working right in front of me. And and because we put our tape from corner to corner on this grid, as it were, of our sampler, it's really easy to get a straight stitch. Now one little bit of my presser foot is riding on the side of the tape, and my other, my other, my needle is right on the side of the tape. So there I go from, from corner, now I'm coming back, and because the tape is rucked up a bit, as you can see here, we just have to maybe just readjust it slightly. Again, it's easy because we're just working right in front of us. So corner, needle down, and then let's figure out where we're gonna go. Now again, very important, we've pin basted this, but I'm holding it down very tightly because as I've said before, I do not, and Jen does not use a walking foot. Now here's a, here's a block which we're going right down the middle. And we can know it's in the middle because from this point to the next point, it matches up. So that's right in the middle of that block. And again, we're just stitching from point to point through our blocks. Coming through the cornerstones, because maybe the thought of a, a long diagonal is overwhelming. Like what? I have to go from one whole side of the quilt to another. But like if you do it in small increments, we're doing good. Now this block, uh, what was this block, Jen? Block number, whatever, the funky one. Yeah. Um, with the, the 11 16 measurement. Um, that, that you're gonna be, you're gonna be making a, quilting line right through the de design but that's okay because our guide on this block is our center point because remember that was constructed sort of like a four patch so there's our center point here and there's where our tape is so there's our guide right through to that center point keep readjusting again you know that I don't have a huge big throat here oh my sorry come off but this is good I'm going right through the design on that block and I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming along. My tape is right on the, the diagonals of these cornerstones. Now, I, I was saying to Jen, here's, oh, oh, it's, it's, it's <laughs> my tape's getting all screwed up. Here's the dreaded block 11, but actually to quilt it, look, all of these four patches, 
you're just going right right through the diagonal of the four patch see that Jim yep and then the pinwheel right through the center right through the center right next to it sort of in the ditch or right next to it or on top doesn't matter to that point right there in the middle readjust your tape coming into the middle of here so I was saying to Jen this is this can get a bit monotonous but that's okay it's easy monotonous and it's effective and we're quilting our quilts and I feel like it's gonna be less stressful for a beginner beginner like myself and you're gonna and, and right off right off okay did you yeah. see what I did right yeah. off so so then what we're going to do is we're going to take our tape off let's see our first diagonal line oh my gosh <laughs> look so there so folks pretty. is our first diagonal quilting line and you can see it already coming alive you see that you see that now what we're going to do with the same bit of tape you can use the same one over quite a few times be from this cornerstone right through to that one well actually you can do that actually yes to make it easier we can what that would be almost like securing our quilt top right. instead of we're not we're not actually I was going to actually stitch in the ditch and secure the quilt top uh -huh. but I'm not doing that because it's not a massive quilt okay sometimes I would and yeah. sometimes I won't and in this case I won't so you have very 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 good suggestion so this will be sort of securing with it on the diagonal okay so the next one you want to do is cornerstone to cornerstone, to cornerstone. again and and it may and again this one works up well so but then if we do just like in the middle of this um that would mean your quilting is every uh f say five inches apart could you just hand me that ruler over there mm -hmm. So, every four and a half inches apart. Is that far enough? Um, or is it is it too far? Is it too far? Yeah, yeah. I think it's too far. So you need two lines. So you need two lines. So, so if this is, um, if it's like, so there's four and a half inches, there's four and a half inches. So by all means, do, do the four and a half inches from that point to there, all the way down. And then in the middle, you're, you're not going to be, you're not going to be, you're just going to put your straight line and it's going to go where it's going to go on that mm -hmm. block. You see what I mean? Yeah, it's not. But the important thing is, to my mind, I think you're absolutely right, is getting the cornerstones. You'll have an X in each one then. You're going to have the X in each one. On some of the blocks, is we're going to be off of it. But right. that's okay. Your eye is going to follow where the, on the sashing or on the, yeah. on the, um, on the cornerstones. Right. So I think you're right. So, so. What you, I want to set your machine up so you can go from cornerstone to cornerstone. Okay. okay so our, our next one, and then we're sort of just going to secure the quilts. Okay. Now also, I just wanted to tell you, again, admit you could do this very, very, very at the end when you have all your diagonals set up. What I thought we could do is to make it a little bit more interesting, twice as much work, is to do a quarter, to have like a double row. <laughs> wow. So we'll just start out with yeah. a single row of, yeah. uh, but do you see how interesting that Yeah, would be? it makes it pop. Yeah. That would really make it pop. Yeah. But we'll see, we'll, we'll, we'll just go from that way. So we'll set up your machine and um, yeah, okay. 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 Now, Jen is sitting in my sewing room with her machine that we set out. Um, could you just t turn that light off for a second? Yep. Yeah, because that's too bright. So, um, we've marked Jen's quilt. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and we've established we're going from cornerstone to cornerstone. Now Jen just started and I noticed immediately that like this. <laughs> <laughs> she's her shoulders went right up around her ears. Those first and, few stitches are so I, I know, but don't worry. Okay. So what so what I was saying to Jen, and I, I think I made a comment to somebody before, it sounds a little bit airy fairy. But I always concentrate my energy, yes, concentrate your energy on your hands, your fingers, and your forearms, not your shoulders, not your ears. Concentrate your, your, all your quilting energy out your fingers and through, out your hands and through your fingertips. And people say, oh, you make free motion quilting look easy or quilting. It's because all my energy is in my hands. <laughs> it's like so weird, but it really does help. It helps keep your shoulders down. It helps relax your back. Now, again, I said to Jen, she's going to be sewing and quilting in her dining room on her dining room table. But Jen just came into my sewing room and what did you say when said, you sat down? I said one about your, why do you have a yoga mat under your sewing machine? We have a, I have a yoga mat. Why do I have a yoga mat? To keep the machine from moving, which makes a lot of sense. Cause when I start my machine's here and when I'm done, my machine's yeah, way no, back here need, and I have to keep pulling it forward. Exactly. So you need, you need a, I, I just cut up an old yoga mat. That's a great idea. So to keep your machine and that's one less thing you have to worry about. Yeah. What is another thing? The chair has wheels on it. Yeah. I was using a hard dining room chair, and this is, I see how this is easier for yeah. moving. Right. And, and actually, closer. exactly, you can yeah. go, exactly. So if you're sitting on a hard chair, not cool. Yeah, and, so I'm going to take my office chair and move it to my dining room and then put a mat under mine. And that exactly. will solve a lot of my problems. That will solve a problem. And then also, you're, you're having to um, bunch your quilt. Yeah nice and smooth nice and loose I should say just to keep this part in front of me exactly straight. you're just where are you quilting you're quilting right, right in right right there and the rest is supported the machine sounds nice yeah yeah it's a nice little machine yours sounds so fast it's like my, 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 <laughs> mine is fast I'm like mine sounds so slow after I hear yours now, mine's ridiculously fast. This is how most machines sound. Okay. So we're keeping the quilt nice and loose. Jen is stitching right on the side of that tape. I'm getting to my white block here. So right. Want to so you want to go through the white block. And again, that might not, that might not equate as a straight painter's tape line, but your eye We'll see that the it's going the X through that box is where it should it's supposed to be. Move this pin out of my way. Well, that fan is making that noise. <laughs> it feels good though. Yeah. There you go. Now this way, quilting on the diagonal, you're just having to worry not about this entire length. Jen is worrying about stitching pretty much just through one block. And even I notice, because I'm not as experienced, I'm kind of looking like three inches, like my table ends here. So I'm kind of looking from here to here. Yes, that's fine. That's yeah. exactly. Now, I, we were just trying to figure out and sort out an extension table for Jen's little sewing machine. My Husqvarna table that I have and my brother, they don't work. Um, is it worth it to have an extension table? I do believe so, but this is working. Um, if, again, we are, we are catering this to beginner beginners, and this is a beginner's um, small, very adequate sewing machine. It doesn't have an extension table. This is a fairly decent sized quilt, but what's Jen doing? She has a table behind here, which she will on her dining room table, and we put the quilt to the side of the table. So very, very important.
to have your quilt supported on a table and on your lap. And then again, decent sized quilt, but look, it's fine. It goes through the small little throat. It's shockingly fine. Actually. It's sh exactly. Yeah. So people are like, oh, how do I quilt my big quilt? This is Jen's first time. And uh, a lot of people roll this bit here. I just sort of shove it and then bring it back, bring it through, and there you go. <laughs> Jen's been stressing about this since January. I know. I was <laughs> but, like... but it's really doable. It's really doable. Home sewing machine. This is straight lines, nothing fancy, but just some helpful hints, hopefully. Yeah, that this made all the difference in the world, actually. The painter's tape. The painter's tape, the yoga the mat. Yoga the yoga mat, yeah. Chair, exactly. Like, the whole system works. Much yeah, than yeah. Much. And again, when you're beginning, you don't, you don't, you know, you, you set up your grandmom's machine on your dining room table yeah. type of thing, you know? Mm -hmm. And right on! <laughs> we have one quilting line. Only 75,000 to go. <laughs> so, um, so that's going to be it for today, folks. We're going to see Jen back. With a quilt, with a quilt. quilted quilt, maybe um maybe I'll address how I'm gonna might do mine two a double row of stitches okay. maybe or maybe not, yeah. um and the the grid you're gonna we're gonna be doing cornerstone to cornerstone yeah. and then filling in okay to where it looks visually yeah probably every two and a half inches or so okay yeah we'll see how that looks and that means you will be cutting through some blocks yeah but that's okay because our cornerstones will have, X's. Will have all the x's and that's what's important okay okay folks so Thank there you. is jen's you're welcome love you jen love you. <laughs> bye